we want to evaluate the given double integral over the region R, where R is the parallelogram enclosed by the lines shown here. I've already graphed these four lines here on the xy plane. Just notice how the region R is this parallelogram here. We're going to evaluate this double integral by performing a change of variables, which will simplify the region of integration and make it easier to evaluate the double integral. However, it's important to remember when performing a change of variables of an integral, we will have an extra factor in the integrand function. So looking below, the double integral over the region R of f of x comma y differential a is equal to the double integral over the region S of f of u comma v times, this is the Jacobian, the extra factor in the integrand function, times the u dv. So we'll have to write our function f of x comma y as a function of u and v, and also find the Jacobian in order to perform a change of variables. Let's first identify the equations we'll use for the change of variables, sometimes called the transformation. Looking at these first two equations, notice how the left sides are the same. They're both negative 5x plus 3y. Looking at these two equations, notice how the left sides are also the same. They're both negative 3x plus 4y, which means we're going to let u be equal to negative 5x plus 3y, and we'll let v be equal to negative 3x plus 4y. By choosing these equations for u and v, we can simplify these linear equations in the uv plane. Notice how this first equation would now just be u equals zero. The second equation would be u equals three. The third equation would be v equals one. And the fourth equation would be v equals six. So if we were to graph these four equations in the uv plane, we would have our new region of integration. And we've already done this below. If this is the u-axis and this is the v-axis, this would be u equals zero, this would be u equals three, this would be v equals one, and this would be v equals six. So notice how the region of integration in the uv plane is this rectangular region here. Also by selecting these equations for u and v, we can easily write the given function f of x comma y as a function of u and v f of u comma v is just going to be equal to u divided by v. But now we still have to find the Jacobian, which again is going to be the extra factor in the integrand function when writing the integral in terms of u and v. So for review, the Jacobian is equal to this two by two determinant, which is equal to this product minus this product. So notice how to find these partial derivatives. We have to have an equation for x in terms of u and v, as well as an equation for y in terms of u and v. And we'll find these equations using u equals negative five x plus three y, as well as v equals negative three x plus four y. And also notice that we're going to take the absolute value of the determinant. So let's work on determining our equations for x and y. So using, so let's use, so using u equals negative five x plus three y, we'll first solve this for y by adding five x to both sides and dividing by three. So we'd have y equals u plus five x divided by three. We also want to solve the same equation for x. If we solve this equation for x, we would have x equals three y minus u divided by five. Now using the second equation of v equals negative three x plus four y, let's go ahead and solve this for y. So we would add three x to both sides and divide by four. So we'd have y equals v plus three x divided by four. We also want to solve this equation for x, which would give us x equals four y minus v divided by three. And now using these two equations and performing substitution, we can write x as a function of u and v. And using these two equations, we can perform substitution and form an equation for y in terms of u and v. So using these two equations, we'll substitute v plus three x divided by four for y. So we'd have v plus three x divided by four equals u plus five x divided by three. And using these two equations, we'll substitute this quantity for x here. 
that would give us the equation 4y minus v divided by 3 equals 3y minus u divided by 5. Let's go ahead and cross multiply. So we'll have 3 times the quantity v plus 3x. That would give us 3v plus 9x equals 4 times the quantity u plus 5x. That would be 4u plus 20x. Let's go ahead and solve this for x. So we'll go ahead and subtract 9x on both sides and also subtract 4u on both sides. So we'd have 3v minus 4u equals 11x. Dividing both sides by 11. Let's write this as x equals 1 eleventh times the quantity 3v minus 4u. Now for this equation, we'll cross multiply. So we'll have 20y minus 5v equals 9y minus 3u. Solving for y, we'll subtract 9 on both sides, as well as add 5v. It'll give us 11y equals 5v minus 3u, dividing both sides by 11. Let's write this as y equals 1 eleventh times the quantity 5v minus 3u. Now that we have both x and y in terms of u and v, we can find the Jacobian. So the first step is to find the partial derivatives. So the partial of x with respect to u would be 1 eleventh times negative 4, which would be negative 4 elevenths. The partial of x with respect to v would be 1 eleventh times 3, or 3 elevenths. The partial of y with respect to u would be 1 eleventh times negative 3, or negative 3 elevenths. And the partial of y with respect to v would be equal to 1 eleventh times 5, or 5 elevenths. So the Jacobian of x and y with respect to u and v is equal to the 2 by 2 determinant, where the first row is going to be negative 4 elevenths and 3 elevenths. The second row is going to be negative 3 elevenths and 5 elevenths. The value of the 2 by 2 determinant is equal to this product minus this product. So we're going to have negative 20, 121st minus negative 9, 121st, which is equal to negative 11, 121st, which equals negative 111th. So now going back to our first slide, notice how we need to take the absolute value of the Jacobian to determine this extra factor in the integrand function. So we also now know the absolute value of the Jacobian of x and y with respect to u and v is equal to the absolute value of negative 1 11th, which equals 1 11th. Now let's set up the double integral using the change of variables. So the given double integral over the region r of f of x comma y is going to be equal to the double integral over the region s, which we'll come back to in a minute. And then we have f of u comma v, which is u divided by v, times the absolute value of the Jacobian, which is 1 11th. And then we have du dv. And now we need to find the limits of integration for u and v using this rectangle here. We'll notice how because we have a rectangle, the limits of integration for u are going to be from u equals 0 to u equals 3. The limits of integration for v are going to be from 1 to 6. Now let's evaluate this on the next slide. Let's write the integrand function as 1 11th times u divided by v. So now we integrate with respect to u, treating v as a constant. The antiderivative of u is going to be u squared divided by 2. So we end up with 1 over 22 times u squared over v. And now we need to find big F of v minus big F of a by performing substitution for u. So when u is equal to 3, we're going to have 9 over v. And of course, when u is 0, we'll just have 0 over v. So this is going to simplify to the integral from 1 to 6 of 9 divided by 22 times, let's write this as 1 over v. And now we're going to get this back to v. So we're going to have 9 over 22 times 
natural log absolute value v. So we're going to have 9 over 22 times natural log 6 minus natural log 1. But natural log 1 is equal to 0. So the exact value is 9 over 22 natural log 6, which is a decimal, is approximately 0 0.7330. I hope you found this helpful.